And I'm just going to use this as a jumping off point to get to uh, the place that I want to get. But in Psalm 66, 6, how many of you know the number of the Antichrist? The Bible says is what? 666. Six, six. six is the number of a man. Six is the number of a man. Six, six, six is the number of a man. But in Psalm 66, six, 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 this is not an Antichrist scripture, but I think it says, it's one of those things that says always. Past, present, and future for mankind. Look at this. And I don't have theological uh, proof of what I just said to you, but I believe that it applies. I just found it. I just read it this morning. It just jumped off at me. Psalm 66, six. look at it. He turned the sea into dry ground. They passed through the waters. Of the, I'm reading from the NIV today, by the way, uh, Skip, and I apologize for not letting you know that. He turned the sea into, into well, let's just go over to verse 5. Come and see what God has done. If you want to really be blessed, just start at verse 1, come down. Come and see what God has done. Everybody say, what, look what God has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I, I want to praise his name. Jesus is just the same. Come help me praise him. Right? Come and see what God has done. Sometimes we need to look back. That's why the Bible is here. Start in Genesis, go away through. Look what God has done. The Old Testament is not worn out. It needs to be brought out. It's the first 4,000 years of man's history and what God has done. How can you take away two-thirds of what God has done and say it's not important? The scripture says in Timothy, these things are there for our example and they show us the way to salvation. Help us make us wise in salvation. So it's saying, you read the whole Bible because then you see what God blesses and what he doesn't like and, and how people find the favor of God and how they fell out of favor and that type of thing. And grace, of course, he doesn't remember our iniquities and our sins and our transgressions and our digressions against us anymore. But it doesn't mean there's, consequent, there's not consequences for disobedience. And he wants us to know that. I, I change not, says the Lord. Right? Come and see what God has done, how awesome his works, how awesome his works in man's behalf. I want you to remember that. How awesome are his works in man's behalf. He's done it in the very beginning. He created heaven and earth and put man there to rule and to reign over the earth. And we're going to rule and reign with him in heaven if you look at Revelation. Read it. On man's behalf, he did it for you and me. He turned the sea into dry land. This is when he walked the Israelites or the Hebrews out of Egypt, out of Pharaoh's bondage and slavery after the ten plagues and marched them to the, the Dead Sea. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed the, through the waters on foot. Come let us rejoice where? In him. In him we live and move and have our being. In that day, Jesus said in John, you shall know that I am in you, and you are in me, and the Father is in me, and we are in you. This is a great place. We were outside of God, now we're inside God. And God is inside of us. Our lives are hidden with God in Christ, in heavenly places. Spiritually, we're already there. We're walking through this earth now in fleshly bodies as His representatives in the earth. As His kingdom people. In the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light is ruling and reigning in us. In my mouth, in my moods, in my attitudes, in my emotions, that's something that we are supposed to watch over. Restraining, bringing every thought into captivity, denying ourselves daily, picking up our cross, and following Him. It's obedience to Christ. Philippians says that Christ learned obedience through the things that He suffered. When it talks about things that He suffered, He suffered the things that He suffered being obedient to God. The things that happened to him because he was being persecuted for righteousness sake. The devil hated him. The earth hated him. And so on and so on. And he says if they persecute me, they're going to persecute you. It has nothing to do with it other than you understand it's part of the program. Everyone that would love godly, the Bible says, is going to suffer persecution. Now if you don't live, if you don't live godly, you're not going to receive persecution because you don't represent the kingdom. Simple. All right. They passed through the waters on foot. And so he says, come let us rejoice in him. Verse 7, he rules forever by his power. Stop. He rules forever. How? By his power. He rules forever by his power. We are called to rule and to reign. How do we do that? By his power. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, Jesus said, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power, authority, the ability to rule and reign. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When the Holy Ghost came upon Samson, he had power and strength and might to do things that his lifestyle did not warrant him having. How many of you know about Samson? Maybe people here don't know anything about Samson. Samson fell into, uh, he had a sex problem, he had a lust problem, a flesh problem. Okay? He represents mankind. Now, not everybody, well, yes, the Bible says that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, that all of us as human beings have to deal with those things even after we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Vain glory, selfish ambition, those things. We have to put those things down by how? The power of the Holy Ghost in me. You shall receive power to do what God wants you to do to be who God's called you to be after you receive the Holy Ghost. You need to receive the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going to preach on this other than if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, spoke with other tongues, you need to seek God for that. Yes. Amen. How many, hey, he said, how much more would your Heavenly Father give to those that what? Ask for it. They want it. If you don't want it, He doesn't give it to people that don't necessarily want it. Or those that are seeking it. Or those that are asking Him, expecting to receive from them what He asked for. Why are we asking it? Because He provided it. Number two, He promised it. And He does it by His own power. Jesus said, when I go away, the Comforter is going to come. It happened on Acts chapter, uh, in Acts chapter uh, 2. When they were in the upper room, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Then they went out. And for the first time it says, and Peter standing with the eleven. First time they were ever in agreement. <laughs> Behind the message. Peter had been told by Jesus, you're going to have the keys of the kingdom. I've chosen you. And there wasn't anybody said, that ain't right. He ain't supposed to have the kingdom. He ain't not supposed to have the keys. Remember before he went to the cross, what they were doing, they were saying, let me be the left hand. Let me be on the right hand. Let me be your number hand. My number. They were arguing about who was going to be first, who was going to be second. Right? They were all arguing about that stuff. That stuff ceased when they were filled. So what's wrong with the church today? It's not filled with the Holy Ghost. Even people that have received the Holy Ghost don't stay full. And they return to the dog's vomit. We start acting more like the devil than we do like Jesus. Amen. Peter found that weakness in his flesh, remember? Jesus said to him in John's Gospel, he says, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows, before the rooster crows. And G, uh, the Peter's problem was he had confidence in his flesh, not in the spirit of the living God. He had, he had confidence in bold. How many, how many believe that, G, that Peter was really committed? Hold your hand up. Say, yes, sir. If you believe that. He was committed. How many believe that he was convinced? He was confident in himself. Not in God who saves. Not in God who keeps us from falling. Not in Him who is the all-powerful. The all-knowing. But thank God the all-merciful. Grace is what saves us. So he says, we're in here in, in, in Psalm 66, or that 666, it says, uh, it says, what was it when I just read, oh, I'm sorry, I was in the wrong verse. Uh, in 666, he says, come let us rejoice in Him. Come let us rejoice in Him. Come and see what God has done, verse 5, how awesome His works are on man's behalf. And we have to look at that and say, okay, let's take it out of the Old Testament and bring it into the New, because Jesus, the Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. We could not reconcile ourselves to God. The world was lost and everybody in it was lost everything that was in it was lost it, everybody say the fall they fall but Jude 24 says unto him is able to keep you from falling let me say something to you and I, I'm going to direct it to you because you're sitting right there Jessica you are God's world you are God's world you are Jesus Christ's world. The way a husband's supposed to live, love his wife. The bride of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, church means the called out ones, called out of sin, called out of darkness, called out of death, like Lazarus, and called back into life, back into relationship. Amen. Jesus gave his life for the church because she was his world. And the church is still his world. 
That's why we're called not to yield our members unto, righteous, or unto unrighteousness any longer because we belong to God. Know you not that you are the temples of the Holy Ghost, Corinthians tells us? Don't you realize that you are the temple of the Most High God? That God built you, make you, chose you, carved you out of stone. He, you are the living stones of God. Yes. And he says, you don't belong to yourself anymore. Amen. Thank God you don't, because if you belong to yourself, the wages of sin is death. And if you do, it says, the way, it, says, uh, it, it says there's a way that seemeth right unto man. If you were left to yourself, you would follow the way of your flesh, the way of your, that seems right to you. But the scripture says, but the, but the, the, ways, uh, the ways of God are beyond our ways. It says there's a way that seems right unto man, but the ways thereof, the ways of man, is the way of death. Amen. It's not the way of life. It's not the way of joy. It's not the way of peace. It's not the way of hope. It's not the way of health and prosperity and blessings in the spiritual realm. Amen? So... In, in Psalm 6, he says, you look back at the things that Christ has done. Christ has done all this for you. Now, we've been talking about grace. Grace that endures. Grace that abounds. Grace that's amazing. Uh, grace that's available. We've been talking about that. Grace that sustains us. In other words, it keeps us in hard and difficult and dry places. That's actually where I started out, the grace that sustains us. And I want to tell you something this morning. The Holy Spirit has told me, he's confirmed it several times through our songs, through things people have said, that he sustains us even in our dry times. Let me say another, something else. He sustains us in our weak moments. Amen. Go with me to Hebrew, or uh, no, 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 not Hebrews. Go, go with me to, uh, yeah, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm sorry. Uh, that was right. Hebrews chapter 11. Hallelujah. I'm talking to, I wanted the young people up here right now because I know that young people struggle with this as adults do. That you lack the power of God flowing in your life because condemnation says you're not, you're not right for it. You're not worthy of that power. You're not, you're not privilege. You have failed God. You've not, you've performed poorly in your flesh. How many have ever performed poorly in your flesh? Okay, everybody here ought to say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God for it. Thank God for His grace and His mercy. Okay, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, He says, all, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. The glory of God is God's complete character and nature. There is in Him, there is no shadow of turning. He's not one thing today and tomorrow. He's into something else. Right? He's the same yesterday, day, forever. Amen. Amen. So He changes not. Scripture tells us that. He changes not. God is good. And his mercy endures forever. How, how many days? Every day. All day. For who? Whosoever will. It's for God so loved the world. Everybody in it. Jews, Gentiles, Greeks, Hebrews. Amen. No matter what color your skin, no matter what continent you came from, no matter where your roots are. Somebody said, well, what nationality are you? Well, we're sinners saved by grace. We were sinners saved by grace because all of our roots fall back to Adam and Eve. There wasn't black people, yellow people, white people, red people, and tan people in the garden. There were two people, Adam and Eve. And out of Adam and Eve came all of us. Stop ridiculing other people because of how God made them. Stop cursing people because of the color of the petals on their... You look at each other as a bouquet, you can't turn to the rose and say, I curse you because you're red. The devil does that. Stop it. Stop it on Facebook. Stop it in your home. And stop it in your mouth. Because we are the kingdom of God. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. And we are called to show forth the praises of God. And when God changes us, the world will say, look what the Lord hath done. Look what the Lord hath done. Because we come together as one. Not as Jews or Gentiles or Greek or Scythian or male or female. Rich or poor. Old or young. We are one family. We are one in Christ. Turn to somebody and say, we are supposed to practice His oneness. Amen? Amen. Now, where does all the other stuff come from I taught on it Wednesday nights? The wisdom is from beneath. It's from the devil. Amen. I want to talk about that. Let me get on to my, my message. Ah, excuse me. All right. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. 
This is everybody know this is what they call the hall of faith. The hall of you know the hall of uh, what do they call that? Hall of, fame. hall of fame. It's the hall of faith. Okay, these are the people. That have, and he reads through all these people. Here's the one I want to get to. Go all the way down. It says, and what more shall I say? And he talks about all these wonderful people: Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and oh and Sarah and Joseph and oh wonderful wonderful people and Moses. Oh my lands. And we say, wow, is that cool? And then and then. <laughs> Uh, he verse 31 he brings out the prostitute Rahab how do they get into the hall of faith amen Okay, verse 32. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to take up a talk about Gideon, who was hiding, remember, fight, uh, afraid of the Gideonites. He said, I'm the least among all the tribes, and I'm the least. Our family's the least of the least. How can I be anything? And then Barak, which I think means blessing, if I remember right. And then Samson. Uh, I stop right there. I said, Samson? He's in there with David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms. I'm thinking, Samson? My lands. He had a calling of God on his life from birth. And he, the guy was constantly doing things that get you kicked out of the church if you don't stop it. <laughs> He run around sleep with everything that catches his heart. Like, man, that's a fox. I'm gonna go. That's a foxy lady. That was my old word back in my day. It was foxy. I don't know what it is today. Hot or dope? What's that word about? Man, that's dope. I don't understand that one at all. But I told my wife back in '70 something. I said, "This is called the dumbing down of America." And then when they call, when they come up and say, "What's your new word?" Dope. I can wonder about it. Maybe this is that. Anyway, okay, Hebrews. <laughs> And then that, let, let, let's go down. It says, who, everybody say it with me, verse 33. Who through faith conquered. Yes. Through faith yes. we conquer. Yes. Through faith we conquer. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Who conquered death, hell, and the grave. And because we're in Him, we're conquerors. We're more than conquerors. So we have to look back at what God has done. In Ephesians 3, it says, By grace, God's goodness, His kindness, His love, His mercy, His power, His unmer unmerited favor. Nothing we could do to find favor. We didn't do anything to say, Good, well done, thou good. You know what the well done is now? The well done is now that you have faith, and because you have faith, it ties in with your works. And that's why it says, Good and faithful servants enter into the kingdom that's prepared for you. Because you have faith and you have works. Philippians says that now are we the, uh, that God, that, that it's, uh, that that is God that works in us, excuse me, God that works in us both to will and to do His will. The things that please Him. Amen? Ephesians 3.20 says that He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we are able to ask or think according to the power that works within us. It's the power of Christ. It's the power of God. It's God's own power. That's why you must be born again. By faith receiving Christ. You cannot be saved outside. You can be good. You can be holy. You can memorize the Bible and be lost. Because your faith and confidence is not like Peter. Your faith and confidence is not in God. It's in you. Your ability to be good. Right. Amen. Now we may we are called to be good. But we can only be good because the good one is working within us to will of his will. I want you. Here's my will. That you prosper and be in good health. Yes. First John 4.4 4, I think it is. Here's my will. My will is that you be saved. God is not willing that any would perish. But that all would come to repentance. You can't be saved and not repent. Repent means to have a change of mind and a change of heart. Amen? And then to follow after that power of change, to begin to seek God, hunger and thirst after God, instead of shunning God and having nothing to do with God. When you're born again, something happens all of a sudden, you love the things you once hated. Yeah, I'll sit and read the Word. My, my grandmother was 76 years old when she got saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in other tongues. 76 years old. She had a, like a third or fourth grade education. She was not a good reader. She didn't have a lot of comprehension. When she got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, she, she would read like a second or third grader. When she got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, we'd come over to her house, and she would sit for three and four hours doing nothing but reading her Bible. Amen. David Punch's dad, my Uncle Gene, Eugene Herman, 
he got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'd go over to his house and meet him when he lived over there on uh, Monroe, all the way at the corner there where it meets, reached the Gator Street, isn't it? And, and, and he was living in an apartment there. I go over, I went over there one day to get him. And it was real early in the morning, and he had a light on. He was sitting in the kitchen, had these glasses on. And what was he doing? Reading his Bible. Something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. The change that Jesus brings is the only, that's the only thing that's going to change us. I mean, it's not education, nothing wrong with education, but that's not going to change you and make you like God. Okay, turn now to verse 34. Okay, they quenched the fury of the flames, and they escaped the edge of the sword. And then I want you to remember these next, uh, these next words, whose strength, oh, excuse me, whose weakness, everybody say it with, let's read it together. See where I'm at, second part of it. Whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign enemies. Do you know why that's what the Bible says? Cast down every evil imagination, everything that rises itself above God. Cast it down. Why? Because you're already taking, you're routing out foreign armies. Everything that rises itself above God. God is trying to control your heart and your mind and your life and your mood and your attitude. And the devil wants to control it too. And so every thought that comes in there that takes you out of the kingdom of God and thinking, you're supposed to cast that down because it comes from the evil one and it is evil and it will bring forth death. It will bring sorrow, depression, discouragement, despondency, and defeat. We are army of the Lord. And we're called to be in battle. And now, of course, that begins with prayer and the Word of God, putting on the whole armor of God, which I don't have time to go into today. But the truth is, the power of God's strength at work in us, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory, it's the power of that might. No wonder Jesus said, there's no way to the Father except through me. There's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You can't get there through Buddha. You can't get there through uh, Muhammad. You can't get there through Confucius. You can't get there through a guru. You can only get there through Jesus Christ. He was the Son of God. God. In Revelations, he said, I am he who was and who is and is who is to come. Yeah. He is the all authority in heaven and earth, the Bible says, is given to him. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and every knee shall bow, every king, every continent, every country, every village, every tribe, every knee will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. at his coming. You don't have to get angry and fight with people over their false beliefs that there's some other way to God. Because when Jesus Christ comes, the Bible tells us in Revelations that they're going to run to the caves and hide in the rocks and say, fall on us when they see him coming because they realize they've rejected the one who has all power and all authority and can cast you into hell or take you into heaven. Say, so do you apologize for that? No, I'm not seeker friendly. We try to be savior friendly. And that means speak the truth. Do it in love. But you don't compromise with people that say, well, that kind of ruffles my feathers. Well, it ruffled the feathers so much of the Jews, and the, uh, of, the, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that they hung Jesus Christ on the cross and crucified the very one that came to save them. Don't worry about ruffled feathers. His sheep hear, their vo hear his voice and another they will not follow. We're not out here seeking goats. We're out here seeking sheep. A goat is a goat and a sheep is a sheep. A tail is a tail and a wheat is a wheat. The children of God and the children of the devil are what they are. And unless we be born again, we fall into the wrong category. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't even talk, but there's a lot of parables on that too. Okay, here's what I want to say. Hebrews 10, 32 and 34, whose weakness was turned to strength. Now I want to talk about that. Uh, if you go back to, uh, if you go back to, I'm going to give you just three examples real quick. If you go to uh, uh, Judges, or no, no, uh, is it 1611? Which one is that? i got to go back here. Well, let me just talk about it. I won't have to read about it. When you go back to uh, Samson, uh, and when you go back to Elijah, there's three people, Samson, Elijah, and Peter. Samson, Elijah, and Peter. Elijah, well, let's go to Samson first. Samson, we know, was a fornicator. Yes. He slept around. 
And so we say, why did God use him as a prophet? Because he was like the chosen ones. He was like Israel. God was trying to show them, you are just like Samson. Your, your infidelity in your heart. You keep serving false gods. I've given you everything that you need, but yet you're not true to me. You're like Gomer, who was a prostitute. And God told the prophet, marry her. Why would he do that? Because I want to show my heart towards a church and towards people who just don't get it. In their weakness, I'm made strong. Now, this is not an excuse to go out and philander. Because there is a judgment. Amen. And the Bible tells us in the New Testament, it's a, it's a New Testament, the Grace Testament. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of God. And he's not talking about the world. He's talking about the church. If you read it in context, they never write the epistles to the unbeliever. The epistles are written to the church, the saved. The sealed. The servants of the Most High God. Though that calls that call themselves sons of God, the children of the Most High God. But the point being this, is that Samson is a type also of, of course, of people that philander, they wander. I mean, Samson had this great anointing on his life. It's prophesied. A great, a great prophecy, a great calling, a great anointing on his life, yet he's out philandering. He's doing things to his parents. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that it might be well with you upon the earth. And what's he do? He says, I want you to get this woman for me. They said, she's not even a believer. He says, okay, she pleases me. What, she, what he meant was is that it pleases my flesh. I want what pleases my flesh, not what pleases God. Amen. Not what pleases my godly parents who are looking after me, who grieve over me, who pray and intercede and fast and, tr and, uh, and uh, travail before God for the salvation of my soul. Yeah. And our disrespect for them is to do the opposite of what they're asking us to do. And their heart for us is the best and the blessed. But the devil comes and says, your parents don't know what they're doing. A bunch of old fogies. They come out of that world, they don't even know how to use their cell phones. They got to come to you for wisdom. Pride enters in. I know more than you do. That's old school. That's old fuddy-duddy religion. Hallelujah. We don't need fire and brimstone anymore. Oh, there's going to be fire and brimstone whether you think you don't need it anymore or not. Yes. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Yes. Now, I'm not going to be preaching on fire and brimstone, but fire and brimstone await those yes. and await the devil and his crew. Yes. Revelation says that the angel of the Lord comes to cast them into the lake of fire. And all those that are adulterers and, 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 uh, and liars and thieves and murderers and so on. So you can go on and you can see it in Revelation. You can see it in Galatians. You can see it throughout the Bible. So the point is this, is that God in our weakness, what's he tell uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I think it is, verse 9. When Paul says, when, when Paul comes to him, he says, I think it was in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Uh, I'm, I'm outside my note. Yeah, it is. Okay, what's it say there? 2 Corinthians 12, 9. This is where Jesus tells, or, uh, yeah, and I say Jesus. Let's go there. I want to tell you what. Well, let me just read it. I'll tell you why. 2 Corinthians 12. And you have to know this, I think. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Thank you for being so attentive. I appreciate it. 2 Corinthians 12. Amen. Thank you for your appreciation for the Word of God. Okay. Now, he says here that he was, that there was a man that he knew was caught up into paradise. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And Paul says, I knew this man that was actually caught up into paradise. He died. He was caught up in paradise. Whether he was in the spirit or in the flesh, I don't know. All I know was this, is he was caught up into paradise and he didn't hear anything. He said, I'm not, I'm not going to boast. Look at this in verse uh, 5. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself. What's he talking about? I'm going to boast about a spirit. The spirit. How many of you know when that man was caught up into paradise, his flesh didn't leave this earth? How many of you have ever had people say they have a, an out-of-body experience and they went to heaven? The doctor goes and go, what in the world happened to that guy? He's laying right here, just cutting on him, he's gone. And then he comes back, oh my God, look at this again. So he's not talking about the flesh being gone, he's talking about the spirit of that man being gone. Stephen, when he stoned, 
Okay? In the book of Acts, he's being stoned. And says, as he's being stoned, he looks up into heaven and he sees Jesus. And he says, I see Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Why is he standing up? Because he's applauding him as he crosses the finish line. They're talking about like in that particular day there were arena. They were like the Olympics. And they would go and when these racers would race and when they get to the end, they would win a crown. And, when they got, and so they would stand when they get ready to flash, pass the finish line, just like today if you watch a marathon, you see people come. <laughs> I just saw a, a, a gentleman has a cerebral palsy, and so he can't walk right. He just finished a marathon. Yeah. Or, or excuse me, he's, he's trying out for a marathon. He just finished a big, long race. I think you'll see all of it on the news. But he comes, and, and there the whole crowd of people, uh, and when he crosses the finish line, because he can't hardly walk, and I'm not trying to make fun. This is the way he walks. And they, yeah. Hey, come on, Jerry! They want to see him finish. Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews that we're accomplished about with so great a crowd of witnesses. They're witnessing us as we run. They're witnessing our faith that it won't falter. When we go through the high places and the low places and the dry places, hey man, I'm going to tell you, there's a there's a people that have already made it in that great hall of faith. They're going, yeah, come on, brother. Hold on to that faith. Don't fall. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep enduring. Don't stop. Endure until your salvation is made. True. Until you get the fullness of salvation. There's a great, whether you know it or not, you're never alone. Jesus is standing at the right hand of God when you get in trouble and you're going through persecution. All the witnesses of God are standing around you as you watch go through your trials. They're going to go. They're going, yeah, go, 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 go. There's, in the spirit realm, that's the only reason why you have grace to get up when you think you can't take another step. Somebody's praying for you. There's an old song, someone is praying for you. Oh, yeah. There's nobody in this world praying for me. They don't care about me. It doesn't make any difference. The Bible says we have the Holy Ghost that intercedes for us and Jesus, who is at the right hand of God, who always maketh intercession. He ever lives. He's living forever to do what? Still serving us. He said, I'm praying for you. He ever liveth to make intercession for the saints Amen. that you will make it. Just like he said to Peter. Peter, you say you're, gonna, you're going to stand up for me. And nobody, the truth is you're going to deny me three times. The word deny in the new, in our international version says denounce me. You're going to denounce me three times before the rooster even crows. You're not even going to make it through the night. If you go back and study, all this is in my notes, and I don't want to go back there, but if you study in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus is praying, and he comes back and he says, stay here and pray with me. And he's heavily, he's heavily burdened with what's coming on him. So he goes and he falls on his face and begins to cry out to God. And he cries unto God. He's travailing. He's praying. He's pr praying through the night. And he gets up finally. He comes back to Peter, James, and John, his three ch chosen people. Amen. Amen. Peter, James, and John. And he comes back and he finds him sleeping. He says, what? Could you not even pray with me one hour? I remember you telling me you weren't going to deny me. You denied me three times and now you can't even, are you going to deny me three times? You can't even make it for an hour, let alone make it through what's coming. God wants us to make it through what's coming. There's a, there's a and, I, and I am saying that men are always to pray and cease not. Jesus tells us that. Men ought always to pray and cease not. Don't stop praying. The church is weak right now because as a whole, the church has stopped praying. Our saints will, our, a lot of people, if, if we were depending on the prayer of the saints, it wouldn't lift a feather on a windy day. But we've got someone that's praying for us, and this is no excuse for our laziness or our irresponsibility or our lack of loyalty. We're supposed to pray. Jesus, in his grace and his mercy, says, what, can't you, can't you pray with me one hour? And he, he, he says, pray. And he says, Peter. Or he says, pray, lest you, lest you fall into temptation. What's he talking about? Your flesh is still susceptible to being tempted. And if you're not prayed up in the spirit, you may fall to that temptation because you didn't do the spiritual things that you needed to do to prepare for that which we know is coming. The devil seeks to devour them. He, he says he's roaming the earth, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for people that, that oh, there's one. Yeah. 
Now, the truth is, Peter got to a place he didn't think he'd get to. Anybody ever been there? He thought, there ain't never going to come a place I'm going to denounce the Lord, and he denounced him. He didn't think he'd ever stop praying all night long, but he did. There's no condemnation in this. There's a revelation in this. There's no condemnation, but there is revelation. The revelation is, is that God can keep you when you can't keep yourself. That's the grace of God. The grace of God. Hallelujah. And when uh, going back to Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, he, he, he's one where, where he says, there was a thorn in the flesh given to me. And he said, because in the New International Version, it says, to keep me from being conceited. Because everybody's going, oh, Paul. Oh, Paul. He's the one that, oh, he just heals people. And he's got such revelation. I don't even understand half the stuff he's talking about. Oh, he's a powerful teacher, powerful preacher. Man, a power of God. I mean, he, he bound one guy, blinded a guy. He did. Because the guy was trying to resist the gospel when he was trying to, Paul was trying to preach and win a man, and the man starts standing up scoffing and trying to persuade him against the gospel. And Paul says, you worker of all subtlety and so on and so on. And he points at you, you're going to be blind for a season. How would you like to see that gift moved in the church? I, I took my nephew to church with me and we got to go to the clinic because he's blind. Where did that happen? In the church, we're going to sue him. That's the response today. Instead of realizing God's trying to correct you, He could have killed you. It could have been the graveyard you were looking at and not an eye doctor. <laughs> Man, we have so much say with this with me. Thank God for His grace and His mercy. Thank God that He loves me. Praise the Lord. He's not willing for me to perish. He is willing for me to repent. Yeah. Wrong attitudes, wrong moods, wrong mindset, wrong uh, words, wrong actions. He, he wants me to re repent. means turn away, turn away from the things that you've been trusting in that you know are displeasing to God and turn and put your faith in God, which is pleasing to God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For everyone that comes to God must, first of all, understand that God, that, that what? That God is, that He does exist. And this is for all the atheists out there. I don't believe in God. That's like sitting on the top of a, of a volcano so you don't believe in a volcano. Sooner or later you're going to get your rear end burned. The volcano will prove its existence. God don't care about you not saying. He, he, he's not, he's not going, man, I wish I could come. I wish I could exist. But they don't believe in me, so I guess I don't exist. No, he does exist. If he didn't exist, you wouldn't even be here. And the fact that he will love people that so do that to God is his grace and his mercy. Paul was persecuting people. He, was, he said, Jesus said, you're persecuting me. What are you talking about? I just killed a few of the saints and I got a bunch of them thrown in prison. I didn't persecute you. That's what he's thinking. I didn't know who you are. Who are you, Lord? He did call him Lord. Who art thou, Lord? You Jehovah Jireh? Jehovah Shalom? Are you Jehovah Sidkenu? Who are you? He said, then Jews knew all those guys. All, knew all, that was all different names of God. He's my provider, my healer, my deliverer, so on and so on. My shield, my righteousness, so on and so on. The El Shaddai, the, all, the omnipotent one, the all, all power, all ever existing one, all power one. He knew all that. Well, who are you, Lord? Because I've never met this God. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it strange? He says, he goes later on in his ministry, he says, I'm going to prove, I'm going to show you the God you don't know. How can you do that? Because I thought I knew him and I met him and I want to tell you about him. There's people been in the church all their life that still don't know God. You think you're right with God and you've never accepted Christ. You've never really surrendered your will to him. And there's a day of reckoning coming. God's not trying to threaten you. He's trying to reveal himself to you. He says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, where was I at? Anybody? Oh, I was talking about Paul. So he's persecuted. He said, who art thou? Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Now, so we see Peter in his weakness, right? I don't know you. We see Paul in his weakness, right? Who are you, Lord? Right? And we see him again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. He said, I had this thorn in my flesh. I prayed three times that God would deliver me, uh, deliver me from it. So there's a lot of argument about what it was, but it was a thorn, period. If you've got a thorn, thorn in your flesh, I don't care if it's a rose thorn or a bramble bush, it hurts. 
Well, Doc, I'd like to know what kind of thorn it is before you remove it. Yeah. Just get it out! <laughs> I'm not a botanist or what do you call it, a biologist. I don't, I don't need to know what, where it came from. I know where it did come from. He says sent from Satan to buffet me. And the new, in a new international version it says, lest I become conceited above measure. So many good things are happening to me. God's using me so powerfully. I, uh, God said, uh, Paul, this is going to go to your head if you're not careful. Yeah. How many of you know Satan couldn't do that unless God allowed him to do it? Yes. He sought the Lord three times and God said, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he prayed through it. He got to do it. This is the overcame it. He just didn't like any weakness in his flesh. How many of you like any weakness in your flesh? Whether it's emotional, spiritual, psychological, mentally, amen, physically. I don't like weakness. I hate it. I so, uh, said so the other day, I wish I was, I had a job uh, that somebody told me about. By, by the way, if you need a job for about three days a week for like three or four hours a day and you're a good, strong, uh, faithful uh, person that can do a good job, uh, you can work for, for about $30 an hour. For about three days a week that I know of. And I told the person, I don't know anybody that needs one like that, but I just got to tell them Lynn, so you think, hey, maybe I can get up on Monday and do that. Sounds like pretty good to me. <laughs> it's just 6 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock in the morning and, and, until later on the season. It goes to noon, whatever, and then it stops during the winter. So, But I thought, man, that sounds like a pretty good part-time job to me. <laughs> It's got to be strong, healthy. And I was thinking, oh, gone. I said, I could do that. Lynn, she said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, don't look at me like that, sweetheart. I can do that. Well. <laughs> and she walked over to me and handed my cane and said, go on with yourself. Go on with your bad self. <laughs> No, she didn't. <laughs> well, I don't know why we chased that rabbit, but I'm glad we got that light on. Anyway, okay. And, and so, and, and the Lord says, My grace, I preached on this. My grace is sufficient for you. Every person in here, let me say this no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter where you are. God's grace, His unmerited favor, His unlimited resources of power, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, blessing, and favor is available to you. It's sufficient for you. It's sufficient to save you. It's sufficient to clean your depraved mind. How many of you come out of a place you think, man, I have to, those thoughts that I had before I came to Jesus are not clean, healthy thoughts, and I don't want them in my mind anymore. How many of you ever, three of you, praise the Lord, I'm glad we're all together in the same cell. In the name of Jesus. Well, you know what I'm talking about. And so, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. It's enough. It's Actually, it's more than enough for you. What do you mean for right now? For yesterday, today, and forever. Whoa, excuse me. I thought there was water there. I was going to do a gainer. No. <laughs> I like to show off my wife, just let her know I can still do a couple of them jackknives. You know. All right. <laughs> she said, you don't have to wear sweat by swimming. When we get home, I'm going to drown you, dude. <laughs> mm, I love you, babe. Okay. <laughs> He says, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away. But he, the Lord, it's the reason why I brought this out, it says L-O-R-D, but it's a little case. Capital L, little case. When it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it means God. When it's L-O-R-D, small case, it's talking about Christ, the master of our soul. The man, Christ Jesus. God, who is a spirit, was inside the man, Christ Jesus, and they were reconciling the world to themselves. You understand that? Okay, so he goes on. He says, and the Lord answered me. This was Jesus. He said, my grace... The grace that Jesus had, Julie, that stood before his accusers and answered not a word. The grace that Jesus had to hang on the cross of those that would not pray with him all night long, or even an hour, hung on that cross. 
but those that were puncturing the wounds in his arms, his feet, his, his, uh, his head, they pummeled him with their fists and slapped him, spit in his face, pulled out his beard, mocked him, scoffed him, hit him on the head with a staff put a crown of thorns with thorns that long crushed him down into his skull where they hit the skull and shot out sideways down penetrating down into his cheekbones and all through his, that same Jesus who they beat till his back was open you could see him probably breathing through the flesh, flesh the sinew and the bones and the muscles excuse me that were stripped from his body embarrassed in the flesh hanging naked on a tree Somebody said, well, I don't know whether he's pretty or naked. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want you to see me in my white skivvies. That'd be embarrassing to me. Yes. They tried to shame him. Hey, Amen. That same Jesus hung on the cross and said, Father, he found grace in his weakness. He says he died in his weakness, the flesh. Yes. He could have just said, calling down 10,000 angels, bang, you're out of here and I'm free. But he, he allowed himself to submit himself to God, to the Spirit of God. The man Christ Jesus said, and he said, Father, forgive them for they, know not what, they don't know what they're doing. They really don't have an understanding of what they're really doing. Did you know a lot of sinners in our lives, they don't really know what they're doing? Right. You didn't know what you were doing when you were out doing the things you were doing. Until the Holy Spirit opened your eyes and said, oh my God, at, at my altar experience where I was repenting the Holy Spirit showed me my life and said, you were a selfish, self-seeking, pleasure-seeking, worthless, ugly person. I didn't see myself like that in the mirror. When I looked in the mirror, I didn't see that person. I was trying to be good and righteous in a lot of ways. But when God showed me through His eyes, I was broken before the Lord. Not broken before the Lord. Going, oh my God, please, they don't send me, don't jump. I, it was His love. My father just saying, son, I just want you to see yourself the way you've really been behaving. He never condemned me. He just called me into His love. And His love healed me. His love set me free. His love later on would lead me into baptism. I get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, buried with Christ in baptism to rise in newness of life. And I needed the power of God to do that. And in that watery tank, God baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. I saw cloven tongues of fire coming down. Didn't even know what it was. And out of my mouth come words, groanings, utterings that I didn't understand. I had no idea what it was. It was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the scripture says, and they heard them speak with other tongues and not, not degrade God. Read it. It says they spoke with other tongues and they glorified God. In other words, look what the Lord hath done. Look what the Lord hath done. This is what was going on. God can be that same God to you. All right, well, anyway, he says, so he says, for this sake, he goes on in 2 Corinthians, he says, for this sake, I'd rather boast in my infirmities, my weaknesses. I can't do all this. I want us to celebrate. I'm going to stop, and i got too much other stuff there. We want to realize that here's what God said, in your weakest moment, I'm glorified yes. because it's my strength yes. that holds you, keeps you, and pulls you back into right relationship with me. If there be any glory, if there be any praise, let it go to Calvary. Let it go to God. So if you're in a dry place, you're in a barren place, you're in a, you know, the truth is, is that you can do things that get yourself there. You stop praying, you stop praising the Lord, worshiping God, spending time in fellowship. You can, you can get off into the world like the prodigal and not even realize you've walked completely away from the church. Completely away from the Father's house. Amen? Amen? But God, in His love and His mercy, says when He began to remember, the prodigal son, when He began to remember His Father's house, He said, I'm going back. And He went back and He humbled Himself. With Samson, I talked about Peter, I talked about Paul, I'm not going to talk about Gideon, but I want to just say this lastly about Samson, because I was thinking about this. How I many of the stre Samson's strength failed him? Yes. I don't like, you know, they show Samson in, in Branson as some big muscle guy. I don't believe he's a muscle guy, I think, because they, 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 it was an oddity to them. Where does his strength come from? Well, if you look like Lauren, uh, what's his name? Yeah, uh, who was it? Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you're only five foot five? Those Jews weren't six foot five, six foot three. They were small people. I assume he was just an average guy. Because they look at him and go, where in the world did that guy's strength come from? It came from God. His hair represented a separation to the calling of God in his life. He still had that understanding. I got these problems in my flesh. But I'm separated to God. I mean, part of that was he was angry at the things that had yeah, self-right indignation. But yet he was still dealing with all this weakness in his flesh. And then finally, we know what happened. Everybody say he put his 
actually set his heart on Delilah. He began to look first. Then he began to be wanton. That's why I'm going to tell everybody in here, young and old, stay out of pornography, stay out of the things that are on the church. The, the things that they're even producing right now for women is so degrading. I've heard about Me Too movement. You know what I'm saying? If it's Me Too movement, stop allowing yourselves to be shown as, as sex symbols. The stars walk out, they're barely clothed at all, and they're doing all kinds of, oh, yeah, all kinds of movements with their body that, oh, you think, well, there's nothing wrong with that. You ask anybody else that's watching them that's not trying to be a phony Christian. They'll tell you exactly what's going on through the mind. And when you dress like that, ladies, and you walk out looking like that, don't think that men aren't looking. Don't be going me too. You... Let me tell you something happened to me. The Holy Spirit just welcomed to just recognize. I know, honey. I know. I'm watching the. I'm watching the clock. This morning I walked down. I, I got to take these pills in the morning. I can't take them on an empty stomach. So Lynn said, "Well, grab some turkey." So I grabbed two pieces of lunch meat, turkey lunch meat, and I went back in to do some. Said, "Oh, I forgot." And uh, I got a real good dog. That dog, if you lay down food, he won't even look at it, eat his own food unless he's looking at you. You look at him and say, it's okay, you can go eat. He'll eat. He, he's a great dog. He won't get up on the plate, don't even come by, beg. So I go in there today, and, I'm, and I, lay, I have these pieces of meat, and I hang him down a little low. Guess what? It's right in my good dog's face. And he gets a signal, I guess that's for me. And before I could turn around, grab a hold of it, keep me, it was gone. And he was going, mm, mm, mm. This is why I tell ladies, and ladies, I'm going to tell you about your daughters. What you allow, and I'm not just talking about ladies, I'm talking about men too. But this particular thing has got to be corrected. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. When we send them out as sheep among wolves and then holler because they got bit. Right. When you send them out like that. Yes. Well, it's not hip. Well, you ought to, you've got a Holy Ghost that God didn't put. Amen. The Bible says that you're supposed to train them up in the ways of the Lord. It's not God's job, it's your job. Yes. And ladies, that starts with the moms. It makes me, right. I'm going to tell you the truth. It makes me wonder when a mom allows a daughter to walk out looking like she's working downtown. Right. What in the world's in the mom's heart and why isn't she dressing like that? She'd like to. I don't, I'm not trying, evil imagination, I'm trying to cast all this down. I'm just saying don't take grace so far that you take grace for granted. Does that make sense? Now, the same thing with the boys. You boys, stay off your videos. Yes. Men, women. Yes. What they say, 65%, they say, oh, I'm going to get into percentages of people that watch pornography, even in the church and even in the ministry. Yes. Now, that's their polls, a thousand people, I don't know. But the point is, those things are dangerous. You, you are, an, I was going to say a word that I said, well, let me say more, an imbecile. If you think that you can intentionally pick up poisonous things and eat them knowing what they are and think you're not going to get harmed. You're an imbecile. Well, thank God I'm not. Well, you're legalistic. No, I love the Lord. And I love the Lord enough that it grieves my heart and my mind when I see young people. And truth is, you gave them the video games. You gave them the cell phones. You're the one that paid for them to get on all the stuff. And you say, now make sure you don't watch anything evil. I just talked to a young boy a week ago uh, that had a problem in his mind. A young kid, like seven, eight years old. And I said, where did this thing come from? Do you watch this? Do you watch some of these scary movies? Blah, blah, blah. I had a problem with fear. And uh, I said, uh, no, he said, I don't watch this stuff. I said, well, 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 somehow, did you open the door to this? Well, somebody I go to school with and have to sit next to has got to sit. And they, sh they watch all these things. But, uh, but a believer is being tormented. Yeah. You can't watch what the unclean watch. You can't eat what the unclean eats. You can't drink what the unclean drink. You can't go where the unclean go and think that you're going to walk out of there unscathed. If your flesh is pulling you into it, your flesh is going to fall to it. For God's sake, wake up and come out from among them and be holy as your God is holy. I'm sorry. I gotta have... No, I'm not sorry, Lord. I don't, I don't, I'm not sorry. I'm just saying, come on, let's get it together, church. Let's get it together. Let's be the witnesses he's called us to be. Let's be the warriors he's called us to be. And stop being arrogantly stupid. 
arrogantly stupid as Israel saying to the prophets, you don't know what you're talking about. You know what they did with the prophets that were telling the truth? They tied them up and threw them into prison and said, there. Now it doesn't exist. The truth doesn't stop existing because you start taping people's mouths. That's what's happening in our country, by the way. They are scared to death of us standing up. And I don't mean violently, but we need to pray. Stand with me. I'm sorry. I went too long. Went too long. I went 15 minutes too long. Uh, well, I hope it was good. Thank you, Darius. Bless your heart. Uh, I didn't want to keep you long. I thought it was going to be a quick message. Or some other, but the weaknesses. Samson is found again in the Hebrews Hall of Faith because grace saved him. What happened? His hair was cut off. He had his head laying in Delilah's lap. First he looked. Then he desired. Then he left the faith and went and slept with Delilah. Maybe he dated her a few times and tried to stay holy. Girls, if you're going with guys that can't keep their hands to themselves, close the door. I don't care how good he looks. I don't care what money he's got. He's a devil in disguise. He may be a good kid, but he's not yielding to the presence of the Lord. And ladies, don't be offering up your goods before it's time to give them. Can I talk plain? Okay. We, we, we need to say this thing. Well, I'll go ahead and watch it. Yeah, you watch it, then you're bound by it. Whatever you say and do in your mind, you're already hooked on it. And sooner or later, if your mind's hooked on it, guess what? Your body follows. Yes. Then the consequences follow. Yes. So just, I just hope I can be a pastor and say something to you without you. Whether you hate me, don't hate me. Doesn't make any difference. Love me, don't love. Doesn't make any difference. I love you. I know my heart towards you. I know my thoughts towards you. The good and not evil. Plans to give you a hope in the future. And I want the Lord to bless you. I want you to see you blessed. I want to see you kept. I want to see you soul. You're at, you at peace. But Samson made it in because of the grace of God. His hair began to grow back. Hey, what was he doing? First he had his eyes put out. He was blinded. Hey, he blinded. He couldn't see the things that were lusting anymore. So that was a problem. But now he's got figures in his mind. And he's uh, what's happening? I think he's renewing his mind. Man, oh man. Because hey, when your eyes are closed, all you can do is think about the things. How did I get here? How did I get here? Oh my God. God has been good to me. He should have killed me long ago. I should have been destroyed. I seen what he did to them Philistines. It's a wonder he didn't pick me up and thrash me up against a rock. My God, I was worse than they were. I knew what I was doing, did it anyway. I revolted against the God who called me, chose me, and sent me out. Gave me giftings. The grace of God that's kept me, gave me to a family that loved me, and they still love me, still praying for me, haven't turned me away. My God in heaven. And all of a sudden he said, I'm going to return to the Father's house. And his hair began to grow back. What is that? He began to renew his mind. Come on. And when he got his mind fixed right, the time came for God to, to uh, what, what's the word I'm saying? Uh, glorify his name. And he allowed Samson in his weakest moment to be restored. And his strength was coming back to him. And the last, he said, just put me over behind these pillars. And he, and he said, God, let me die with them. See, so you got to be willing to die to your flesh in order to glorify God. And he, through the what? His own strength? No, through the power of God. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And the Holy Ghost in, and the Spirit of God in him pushed down the strongholds. Yeah. Amen. And those strongholds set the whole nation free. When they fell, it says all the Philistines were killed. I want to be a, I want to be one that leans on God's grace, even in my time of weakness. And, and, and God, uh, He's allowed me to get to weak places where He says, "I want you to understand that it's my grace that's sufficient for you. It's my great, my strength working in you, and you, and for you." Amen. I want you to know that I don't love you any less. I love you even more. Amen. I saw you in your worst state can't pray, or you don't read your Bible, enough, or you don't come to church. All the things that the devil, you get into weak places, but God says, I want you to return. Renew your mind. Get back to that secret place that Kelly talked about. Father, we thank you. And I'm praying for all your people. I thank God in heaven for their patience. We, we probably talked about as the church, the longest, longest lasting church indicator. God bless them. God keep them. God show them your grace and your mercy. You've shown it today. My prayer is, God, you'll take all this that I've said, do something with it, and somebody, everybody here will be 
be blessed and kept renewed. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, don't leave here without Him. Confess you're a sinner. Ask God for His grace. Accept it in your heart. Say, Jesus save me. I can't save myself. And let God deliver you. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you. Heal your bodies. How many of you got a healing today? Did you get anybody get a healing today? Hold your hand up. Hold your hands way up. I want to see them. Oh man, they're all this church. Praise the Lord. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six people I can see. Seven people. That's, praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Can you give God glory and praise and honor? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Take us out. Take us out. Amen. We're being sent out into the world to shine like lights in the world. Amen. God be with you. Thank you.